This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our Legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Hey everybody, this is your host, Tyson Evans with the Book Legion. This week, I'm going to be covering the book, The Seeds of the Soul by Gary Zukov. So Zary Gukov has been famous for a long time with his work on the soul. He's been on Oprah. The book I'm covering today, The Seed of the Soul, is actually written in 1989. Um, it was a, you know, I wouldn't say it was an easy read. It was 248 pages, so not a super long book. But it was a book that you had to read with intention. Oftentimes for me, I had to put the book down come back to it and said, you know, I try to knock out a book a week. And this book I started reading actually on the first, on the on the new year. And today is 21st or the 22nd, uh, the 22nd. And so it took me a couple of weeks to get through the book. So I did really enjoy the book. The book really is about spirituality. And the premise of the book is how do we start to distinguish the difference between our personality and our soul? And where does that lap over? when it comes to life. And so this is definitely a spiritual book. So if you're not into spiritual books, probably not the best podcast for you, but I'm into spirituality. I'm always looking at different ways to grow myself uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, and definitely spiritually, because I think that's one of the big lessons of why we're here. So this was an important book. It's one that my mom read many years ago, and she told me it's something she comes back to often. It's a book that she always has open to her. And oftentimes she said it's a book that finds you when you're ready, right? So if you're listening to this, and you're listening to what I'm going to be talking about, and if you're drawn to it, I would recommend you get the book because it's probably time for you to read it. So I'm going to jump into my three takeaways of the book and hopefully give you a larger context and premise what it's about. So the first section, the book's broken up into basically uh, three different sections. The first section is the introduction. And the first big takeaway I had is in the section karma, uh, which starts on page 34. So the best way for me to kind of show you to get a a feel of what the book is about is to read you a couple passages. So what this chapter is really starting to break down is how do we accumulate karma? How do we get rid of our karmic debt? And then how do we avoid karma altogether? Because really all karma is, is just negative energy that stores up into your soul and it starts to manifest in ways you don't like. The way you basically accumulate karma is by making irresponsible decisions or making unconscious decisions. This is why it's so important to have mindful practices like meditation and breath work because it brings you into the present moment and allows you to be conscious of the decisions, the words and intentions you set so you don't live a life full of karma. One of the things that this book really breaks down is that karma, all the best way to look at karma is something that bad, something bad is gonna happen to you It's just that when you accumulate karma by having a negative action, setting a negative intention, doing harms to others, is that you have to counterbalance that with a positive intention, a positive manifestation, a good deed, a good act, right? And when you're doing a good deed, a good act, all you're really doing is you're going congruent with your soul. When you start to move into compassion and love, you become congruent with our true essence of who we are versus being fixated on the five senses reality that we like to, you know, hear, smell, touch, taste, right? All those different types of things that we experience life through that we think is life. So what this book starts to break down is how to avoid karma, how to catch yourself in real time. So let me read you a couple passages. This is on page 34. Each personality contributes to its own special way with its own special aptitude and lessons to learn consciously or unconsciously to the evolution of the soul. And so what this book is really talking about, the faster that you can avoid karma, making unconscious or irresponsible decisions, bringing harm to others, bringing harm to yourself, the faster you start to evolve. The whole premise of the book is to teach you that life, the reason that you're here is to learn life lessons. And when you don't learn life lessons, they continue to repeat. This is why you see people that jump into relationship after relationship after relationship And although the partner may be different by ethnicity or religion or in a different geographical location, oftentimes they find themselves in the exact same type of relationship because they haven't learned the lesson that they needed to from the last partner. So life brings it full circle and brings it face forward for you to learn again. Here's another great passage I want to read you on page 36. The personality is those parts of the soul that require healing along with those parts of the soul, such as compassion, love, that the soul has lent to the process of healing in this lifetime. So again, what this is about is always trying to heal past trauma from other lifetimes. 
are again that the book does dive into this, but time is only linear in our perception, right? Man, time is a man-made construct. So all your lives are happening all at once. So you may be having negative karma in a different life that may actually affect this life or from a past life affecting this life. And by you walking into more love and and compassion, you're able to help negate the karma from a previous life, a future life, or this life right here. Because through the evolution of the soul, what I was talking about before, learning those lessons is healing, is therapeutic. And that's what we're doing here, is to complete the soul's evolution. And in this reality, you can manifest that healing process much faster than you can in other dimensional planes. So as long as you're being conscious and you're always choosing light as opposed to darkness and you're negating karma, karmic debt, negativity, negative energy, then you start to move closer to having the complete healing of yourself so you can ascend up and connect with creator. So that's really the premise of the book and it does a deep dive into what karma is, what temptation is, how to avoid making unconscious irresponsible decisions and really the repercussions of living an unconscious life. So the section, the second section I'm going to cover is intention. So there's two uh, sections on intention, two chapters really, intention one and intention two. And uh, intention one, I'm not going to cover as deeply. Um, it basically kind of gives you the foundation of what an intention is and how to set an intention and how that comes to be in your mind. So I'm going to read you a quick short passage from page 106. If you truly desire to change your relationship, that change begins with the intention to change it. How it changes depends upon the intention you set. I know that's kind of a convoluted way of saying, really, if you want to change something, it all matters with the thoughts that you put out into the world, the energy you project out into the world. And oftentimes we get really confused on how to do this. Oftentimes people, when they're talking about making money or having a different relationships, they're saying, I don't want to be poor, which attracts energy for you to be poor. Or I don't want to be in a bad relationships, which then attracts the energy of you being in a bad relationship, right? So a lot of times the intentions we set set us up for failure to begin with. And it talks about how to set your intentions correctly to manifest truly the outcomes you want in life. So on page 120, I'm gonna read you a short passage. And this is talking about the consequences of not learning your lessons when you're here on earth. If you do not reach this awareness by the time you return home, your soul will continue these lessons through experiences of another lifetime. What is not learned in each lifetime is carried over into other lifetimes along with new lessons that arise from the soul to learn, new karmic debt obligations that result in the responses of this personality to situations that it encounters. So again, like I was just talking about, if you're not conscious of the karma that you're creating in this life, by the intentions that we set, by not being aware of your emotions, by not being aware of your behaviors, if you don't learn it now, you will come back to repeat the process and learn the lesson. So it's always good to choose light to be congruent with your soul and to go with your intuition. And it has a whole section here on intuition. The last short passage I'm going to read you from intention is the world in which we live has been created unconsciously by unconscious intentions. And oftentimes we create something with unintended consequences again, because it's kind of like, Hey, uh, we want to build nice big homes and nice big cities, but in doing so, we would knock down rainforest that affect our ecosystem and the oxygen and the ozone layer and are very destructive to the animal community, right? And how does that affect rippling effects of the ecosystem with the loss of food production, crop productions, herbs that we need? So all these things play hand in plan um, by being unconscious with our intentions, unconscious with our actions, unconscious with our decisions. And so the more that we can, again, develop mindful practices, the more we can be conscious and steer ourselves into behaviors away from temptations, vi vices, and decisions that will be harmful by truly just going head into the storm. I actually just came from a retreat this weekend, and the guy leading the retreat was talking about the difference between a cow and a buffalo when there's a storm. Some of you may know the story or this uh, analogy, but when there's a storm brewing, a cows run away from the storm as fast as they can. But oftentimes they slow down, they get tired, the storm catches up, it can be detrimental for the cow, right? Because now they're tired, they can't get through the storm, they suffer the consequences of keep trying to run through the storm, they're constantly in the storm, then they get beat up by the storm. Where a buffalo charges the storm head on and gets through the storm as fast as possible. And oftentimes when you're conscious of life and you're choosing 
to move in light and to be congruent with your soul and you have something that you have to take head on that's scary or fearful, that's your opportunity to lesson. I would say your fear is typically your North Star of a lesson that needs to be learned. So the more you spearhead that and you run through the storm, then the faster you can start to elevate your consciousness and your soul and your alignment with the creator, source, universe, awareness, God, whatever you want to call it. So intention is really important because it allows you and it teaches you how to set proper intentions and to be conscious of what intentions you are setting. And if you don't, the consequences of living an unconscious life. The last section I want to touch on is addiction, which is in the um, responsibility section and like intention. And really addiction is rampant within our society, right? There's so many different distractions and things that can pull us away from our true mission. And this really talks about responsible choice. How many of us get addicted to sex or to drugs or to alcohol or to uh, relationships that are toxic? And if we're not conscious of our addictions, then they can really hold us back. Because again, we're not making a responsible choice. So I'm going to read you a quick little uh, passage from page uh, 157. When you challenge an addiction, you choose to become whole. You align yourself with your non-physical help. And so this just speaks to when you have that temptation arise, and let me read it again. You challenge an addiction, something you know there. And we all know. We all feel it here, right? This is why you see people have the New Year's resolutions. They say, I'm going to do it this year. This is the year I kick this. This is the year I stop that. Because they know. Everybody knows, right? Most people just lie to themselves and let things spiral out of control. But when you challenge an addiction and you choose to become whole, you align yourself with your non-physical help. So when you choose to run through the storm head on, you choose non-physical help. Your non-physical help is your guides, your teacher, people that are with you at always, you know, your guardian angels, whatever you want to call them, and yourself, your higher self. Your soul is definitely connected here, but there's a part of you that is still connected to the source, right? This is what we call the divine spark. And this is also when it comes to setting intentions. If you set the right intentions, if you want to start a business, you want to walk into a new type of relationship with your children, with spouse, or even with God, the whole universe is there to support you. All you have to do is ask for help, but do it in the right way and make conscious decisions that are aligned with your non-physical self, which is really just your soul. And when you're making decisions that are aligned with your non-physical self, the universe yourself supports you with that. And so you come into complete alignment and then the world of possibilities, freedom, fulfillment start to truly open and your life can truly start to manifest in a different way. So those are my big takeaways. It was one of the most moving books um, I've ever read. He has another book, Dancing with the Lu, uh, Wu Li Masters, that I want to read. I haven't read it yet. It's on my list. I might cover it this year in this channel. But if you're someone who's struggling right now with how do I really change the trajectory of my life, for me personally, I think it's always important to go inside. And the more we can go inside, it helps manifest the outward reality, right? Because in here is where everything happens. In here is where you have your divine connection. And so um, if you're struggling, if you're looking at a new way to live life or you want to have a new perception of life and you feel a calling to be connected, go check out The Seed of the Soul, a beautiful book. I'll post a link to it in the show notes. Um, I think the books is like between 10 and 15 bucks. It's really uh, inexpensive. You can find tons of used copies for like five or $6 as well um, in the link. So check that out. If you guys haven't done so, please subscribe to the podcast. We really appreciate your support. Said it's just growing uh, leaps and bounds, especially over the last couple of weeks. Kevin and I have been posting some really great content. So if you could, please share with three or four like-minded people. It would mean the world to us. And uh, without further ado, uh, we'll chat with you guys next week. Thanks so much.